And then he said to him, you can get ripped off and make a crazy amount of money, or you can not get ripped off and make no money. My name is Levi, this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding, and this is 30 things you didn't know about Steve Caballero. This year is the 30th year anniversary for the half cap. That's the longest running pro shoe that there's ever been in skateboarding. So we thought it would be fun to do 30 facts about Steve Caballero for his shoe's 30th birthday. Let's get into it. His early life. Steve Cap is born November 8, 1964 in San Jose, California. His parents are of Japanese Mexican descent and he grew up in the Christian beliefs. He starts skating in the late 60s and not long after that, he starts picking up sponsors. Stacy Peralta of Pal Peralta saw him at a contest. He actually didn't even do super good. He didn't make top three, but he plucked Steve Cab out of there because he knew there was something unique about him and put him on the Bones Brigade team. As a kid, he was known for being super small, but super talented. At that time, he wore soccer pads and a hockey helmet while he's at the skate park. Next up, Cab Dragon. At the age of 16 years old, he goes pro for Pal Peralta. The year was 1980. Stacy hands him a board, and on the bottom, the graphic was kind of a stenciled version of a military propeller. It went along with the theme of Pal Peralta at that time. Cab was super bummed when he saw the board because he was used to skating the Ray Bones Rodriguez skull and sword graphic, and he thought his first pro model would be something like that. He then decides he's gonna do something about it. He goes into Pal with a hand-drawn version of a dragon. Because he was born in the Chinese year of the dragon, and he was a huge Bruce Lee fan at the time. VCJ took this sketch and he reimagined it into the dragon on the bearing, which became Steve Cab's second pro model board. This also spawned the dragon theme that followed Steve Cab for his entire career. The big screen. Cab makes his Hollywood film debut with his friend Mike McGill in the 1983 film Escape from El Diablo, a film about a young American that was wrongly accused and imprisoned in a Mexican prison. He also has cameos in the Hollywood films Thrashin and Police Academy 4. This is skateboarding. <laughs> Caballero Skateboard. In his heyday at Palo Peralta, the year was 1987, he made $250,000 just in board royalties. Now think, he was making $1 per board. After seeing Christian Hosoi's success when he started Hosoi Skateboards, Steve Cab approached George Powell about starting Steve Caballero Skateboards. George said this couldn't be done, it's not a good idea. He said that it would be a fake company. Fakedoors.com is our website, so check it out for a lot of really great deals on fake doors because Steve wouldn't work there or have any real input in the brand. This was the first time that Cab wanted to quit Pal Peralta. Strike one! Video parts. Cab has had video parts in some of the most legendary videos of all time, including the Bones Brigade video show, Future Primitive, The Search for Animal Chin. It's interesting to note that in The Search for Animal Chin, he was wearing Jordans because at that time, Vans was on the verge of bankruptcy. Public Domain, Ban This, Propaganda, and Pal Peralta 8. Next, Vans Shoes. Cab said that he's been wearing Vans since the late 70s, but it wasn't until 1988 that he got offered to ride for the team. They made him a deal that paid him a whopping $800 a month in salary. You can compare that to his $250,000 in board royalties he made the year before at Pal Peralta. Doesn't stand up. Vans immediately offered him the chance to design his own pro model shoe. The deal was that he would get 75 cents per pair of shoes sold, but the more shoes that he sold, the less commission he would get off each pair. Cab said no, because it was a bad deal, but Vans Vans kept approaching him again and again. He takes the contract and he shows it to his friend, Lance Mountain. Lance says, listen, you can either get ripped off and make a lot of money, or you can not get ripped off and make no money. The Vans Caballero high top shoe comes out in 1989. It's right on trend as bulky high top shoes are popular at the time. It's also interesting to note that Vans played off the dragon theme and put the dragon graphic on the tags of his shoes like they were on his board. Vans half cab. In the late 80s, early 90s, street skating was starting to blow up. All the street skaters were wearing the Vans Caballero high top shoe, but they were cutting off the collar around the heel 
making it a mid or a low top. And then the exposed foam, they're putting stickers or duct tape around it to keep the foam inside the shoe. Cab starts street skating and getting really into it. He's doing the same thing that the other skaters are doing, taking the high top and cutting them down. Pretty soon he gets annoyed of doing this. It takes him too much time, it's frustrating. So he phones Vans and he pitches the idea of doing the same shoe, but in a mid top. For me, being a trendy person, I ended up doing that myself. So I started cutting them, and I think around the second or third pair, I was like, I was over it. I was like, why don't we just make it like that? <laughs> Steve Cab comes up with the name Half Cab. Every big pro at the time was wearing these shoes. Eric Costin, Mike Carroll, Samana Ga, even Rob Deerdeck. Obviously so many more. It's also interesting to note that Mike Carroll said that the first person that he saw cutting down the half cabs was Javante Turner from EMB. First person to cut down the cabs was Javante Turner. It's a good thing that the half cab shoe became so popular and he was making such good royalties on it. Because by 1991, Powell Peralta split and George Powell took over and made it just Powell. Steve Cab lost his board on there because they said he wasn't even marketable anymore. Though he didn't have a board, he was still on the team, still getting a salary every month. He just couldn't make any board royalties in that time. He would gain his board back though a few years later. Facelifts and ripoffs. Over the years, Vans has given the half cab many different facelifts. They've had the Half Cab 2, the Half Cab 3, the Half Cab Lite, the Half Cab Pro, the Skate Half Cab, and maybe many more coming soon. Also over the years, the Half Cab has been ripped off by pretty much every brand over the years. The next one, Payday. Around this time, Vans gets a new CEO, which means Cab can go in there and renegotiate his contract. He asks for more royalties on his shoe. He went from 75 cents per shoe to $1.25 per shoe. Also at this time, the half cab was blowing up. Everyone was wearing it. So he was making an insane amount of money off royalties. Around that same time, he's designing some new shoes with Vans. He has the low cab, the low cab two, and then he goes on to have the cab four, the cab five, the cab six, and get this, cab seven, wait, and cab eight. He never did get the nine, but we heard that Tony did it at X Games. Literally, Pier 30 shook, and we felt the ground swell. The longest board slide. In 1999, Cab breaks the world record for the longest board slide done on a skateboard. He, gr he, board he slides, he board grinds a 44 stair handrail. This is the pinnacle of street cab. If you're enjoying this video, quick, hit the subscribe button. It helps us give you the content that you love. Cabalarial. Cab invented the fakey Ollie 360 on vert. Apparently he tried them for a month, but then finally figured out the mechanics of it. He starts doing them nonstop and he wins every contest. Stacy Peralta printed a sequence of the trick in the Paul Peralta zine and he wrote underneath the Cabalarial. Steve Cab said that he was embarrassed by the name at the time. It's interesting to note that he was also credited for inventing the frontside board side. The Faction. In 1982, he starts a punk rock band called The Faction with his friends. One of their songs is called Skate and Destroy. It's used in the intro of the Bones Brigade video show. This band toured all across the USA. On that tour, he met a ton of industry heads, including Andy Howell, Jeff Kendall, and Pusshead. They once opened up a show for Social Distortion. Cab's been in a lot of different bands over the years, including Odd Man Out, Soda, Shovelhead, and Urethane. Contests. Steve Cab is one of the most winning skateboarders in contests ever. He has podiumed at contests from the 1970s all the way into the 2010s. That's five decades of contests that he's been winning. If you don't know your maths, that's 50 years. And I'm sure that we will see him on the podium in the 2020s. Commercial Cab. Cab is dressed up as the Wookiee in the Van Star Wars commercial. You can kind of tell it's him when you watch the Wookiee skate. Tommy Honk Pro Skater. Cab said that he got a phone call one day from the guys at Activision. They said, we want you to be in the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 video game. He said that they asked him for video footage to put in the video game. He said he went out and gathered his best footage that he ever had and put it all together for them because he wanted kids to be hyped on him when they played the game. Apparently it all paid off because he said that one year he got a check from Activision for over $250,000. He also got invited back to be a part of every THPS all the way up to Underground. Clothing problems. At a contest, Stacy Peralta pulls Cab aside and complains to him, saying, man, you never wear any Pal Peralta gear in any of your photos or your video footage. Cab said that he wasn't contractually obligated to, and he preferred wearing Batman t-shirts and band tees. This might be what inspired Pal to create a Pal Team Rider handbook, which basically told you how to dress and what was required of you. Cab said this is the second time that he wanted to quit Pal Peralta. Strike two. Long-term relationship. 
It's no secret that Cab is extremely loyal to all of his sponsors and endorsement deals. He's been riding for Paul Peralta since 1979 and Van since 1988, making them the longest running shoe sponsor and board contracts of all time. That means he's been riding for Paul for 43 years. Broken Femur. In 2019, Cab broke his femur riding dirt bikes, which is one of his other hobbies. Highest air. In 1987, Steve Cab sets the world record for the highest air on a skateboard. He breaks the 11 foot mark. That record stands for over 10 years until Danny Way comes in and breaks it on a larger ramp. Collector Cab. Cab was a collector of vintage motorbikes from Triumph and Harley. He also has a huge collection of retro skateboards. Skater of the Century. Thrasher Magazine awarded him the Skater of the Century, which we think is really fitting because he is the best skater to transition so well over the years, from vert skating to street skating, to even contests being bowl skating. Hall of Fame. In 2010, Steve Cab was inducted into the Skateboarding Hall of Fame. Snow Cab. Cab made it onto the cover of Snowboarder Magazine. He was doing a stale fish. It's interesting to note that in this issue, there was also a Jake Burton interview. Scoliosis. Steve was born with a condition called scoliosis. If you don't know what that is, it's basically when you have heavy curvature in your spine. So the spine is shaped kind of like an S. A lot of people will get surgery in order to straighten it out a little bit, but he never did. And he said that he hasn't had any problems and how it's affected his life. Double dip. In 1987, Steve Cab won the Skateboarding World Championships in Munster, Germany for street and vert. Cab Dragon Apparel. Cab has a clothing company where he draws all the artwork himself. He also has a website where you can buy the artwork. In 2003, Steve said that he saw a lot of his friends doing art shows. People like Mark Gonzalez, Steve Olson, Lance Mountain, and Ed Templeton. He was intrigued by this and he wanted to be a part of it. So he started experimenting with art. He does lots of different kinds of artwork. You can buy some of it on his website. He also draws artwork for iconic Canadian clothing brand, RDS, Red Dragon Ski. Kawasaki. Cab is also sponsored for dirt biking and he's sponsored by Kawasaki and Shift. You know, it was something that was really cool about being in control, but being, you know, out of control at the same time. 30 years. In 2022, Vans celebrates 30 years of the half cab shoes. They celebrate by reissuing original colorways from the first year that they were released. They also have the original paneling and stitching from the OG half cabs, the way they were created at the beginning. A lot of this has been updated and changed over the years. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is the 30 for 30 celebrating 30 years of the half cab, the longest running pro shoe in skateboarding. We're thankful that we are one of the select shops that got those OG re-release of the first two colorways. Thank you. Vans, and thank you, Steve Cab. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Levi Shred Shop connecting you to skateboarding. If you want to stay up to date on our other platforms, follow us at Shred Shop or at Levi Switzer on all platforms. If you guys are buying the reissue half cab shoes or any other gear that Vans puts out, make sure you're buying from your local skate shop. Stay out of the malls, go to your local shop, head over to the town over, whatever you got to do. Help skate shops, help skateboarding. Vote with your money. Stay tuned for comment of the week. We got a spicy one, holy smokes. It's from my dog who subscribed to us. Hit the subscribe button. Anthony Bedencourt. It says fave skate YouTube content. Anthony, thank you. Thank you.